Fellow New Democrats, thank you for the confidence that you have expressed in me this afternoon. I'm so excited to be here today with all of you, uh, some of you longtime members, some of you at your first NDP meeting, um, to begin this important journey. I want to thank Ross Eady and Doug Martindale for their assistance with today's proceedings, and the members of the Winnipeg North Executive and Daniel, our federal organizer, for putting this meeting together. To everyone who encouraged me to seek the nomination and who volunteered on my behalf, to my family and to my grandma and grandpa who are here today, <laughs> uh, thank you. I am deeply conscious of the honour and the responsibility that comes with being the NDP candidate for Winnipeg North. This is one of the cradles of democratic socialism and social democracy in our country. Names like A.A. A. Heaps, the Winnipeg North MP who went to Ottawa with J.S. Woodsworth, Alistair Stewart, David Orlico, and Judy Washalisha Lee's ring down through Canadian parliamentary history as strong voices for equality of the human condition, as enemies of poverty, as defenders of human dignity, and as opponents of all forms of discrimination and oppression. I am proud to stand in their footsteps and proud to have the support of Judy and of Kevin Chief, who would have been a great heir to the Winnipeg North tradition and who I know will do it proud as he seeks to serve our community in provincial politics in Point Douglas. I am here today to say with all of you that the by-election last year was an aberration and that Winnipeg North not only has a great NDP past, it has a great NDP future. An NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is someone for a from a party that stands up for working people and doesn't back down to the multinational corporations when they come calling, like the Liberals do. An NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is a strong advocate for a national affordable housing strategy. <laughs> Instead of an MP from uh, a Liberal Party that first abandoned a national role in housing. And an NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is committed to dignity for our seniors and belongs to a party that will continue to call for automatic eligibility for OAS and GIS recipients to ensure seniors receive the benefits to which they are entitled. In fact, today in the Globe and Mail, I see Jack Layton is calling on the Harper government to increase the guaranteed income supplement for low-income seniors and to expand the Canada Pension Plan as conditions of our support of the upcoming budget. An NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is opposed to future trade deals like those now being negotiated by the Harper government that would give multinationals the right to bid on important resources like water instead of an MP from a Liberal Party that, as far as I know, never saw a free trade agreement they didn't want to sign, no matter how harmful it was to the public interest and the well-being of Canadian families. An NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is from a party that wants to put an end to landing fees for immigrants, who supports the reunification of families, and who has been a powerful voice in the fight to end the exploitation of migrant workers. An NDP... An NDP future in which the MP for Winnipeg North is from a party that has always both stood up for, and more importantly, walked with, the marginalized and the oppressed meaningfully and consistently, and not just as lip service after it had become popular to do so. An NDP MP from a party that will demand that the government go beyond an apology and ensure proper funding for residential school healing initiatives and deliver the necessary resources to effectively address the crisis of missing and murdered Aboriginal women. An NDP future in which the MP from Winnipeg North is from a party that had to push the Liberals to get Aboriginal rights recognized in the Canadian Constitution instead of treating Aboriginal issues as an afterthought the way the Liberals did, when after 11 years in power and after having do done virtually nothing to address the injustices faced by our Indigenous peoples, they patched together what turned, to be, uh, turned out to be a deathbed repentance scheme called the Kelowna Accord that they then refused to even legislate uh, so that it could be protected from a change in government. 
When it came to child care, more of the same, Liberals refused to listen to the NDP insistence that a national child care program be legislated so that the Conservatives couldn't kill it. When it came to the environment and the Kyoto Accord, it was the same thing again. Liberals were all talk and no action, making it easy for the Conservatives to pick up exactly where they left off, doing nothing on the environment and making Canada the laughing stock at international events like the one in Copenhagen. And I'm proud to say that our leader Jack Layton has also told the Prime Minister this week that removing the federal sales tax from home heating bills and restoring the Eco Energy Retrofit program are also conditions of the NDP budget support. Programs like this one are good for the planet and they create green jobs in our community. They make common sense. But that the Conservatives would cut one of the only environmental initiatives that they came up with under their leadership is not surprising. The Harper government has shown a total disregard for the planet and little if any compassion for most of the people who inhabit it. It is a government that came to power preaching accountability and has demonstrated an almost unbelievable disregard for our parliamentary system. Civil servants have been fired and long-standing and respected NGOs eliminated for being at odds with the Harper Conservative ideology. Just this week we saw another troubling example of this when Minister Bev Oda decided not to fund Kairos and then to lie about it blatantly on the record. This kind of behaviour speaks to the total lack of respect that this government has for the Canadian people, for Parliament and for democracy and we're not going to let them get away with it. <laughs> disrespect us but they are completely out of touch with our communities. The recent decision to cut funding for five successful gang prevention programs in our city, programs that create alternatives, real alternatives to crime for our young people, while almost simultaneously announcing billions of new dollars to uh, expand our prison, prison system is proof that the Conservatives are the wrong people to lead our country. Yeah. anybody here that the Harper government needs to go. <laughs> the people of Winnipeg North have always known that the real opposition, the real alternative to the Conservatives is not the Liberals. And that the real alternative to the Liberals is not the Conservatives. Except for a few issues which they both like to highlight in order to make us uh, think so that they can pretend to be different from each other. When it comes to putting the interests of people first, they are both a pathetic second to the fight that NDP MPs wage every day in Parliament for social, economic and ecological justice. And that fight is led and led outstandingly well by our leader, Jack Layton, whose team I am proud to be a part of and whom I want to join in the House of Commons. And I'm honoured to have uh, with me today an exceptional member of that team, our Deputy Leader, Libby Davies, to help us kick off our campaign. Thank you, Libby. already been alluded to, uh, I am in so many ways a product of this movement. I grew up in the NDP and I have been actively involved in it for most of my adult life. When I was just a year old, one of those committed and principled MPs ever to serve in the House of Commons was elected. My friend, my political mentor, my father, uh, who is here with us today, Bill Blakey. my dad, I grew up believing, knowing and seeing firsthand what unfortunately most Canadians seem unable to believe these days. That good people get involved in politics in a genuine attempt to make the world a better place and that's why I'm here standing before you today. Yeah. 